Hello guys, welcome to the first of my Elden Ring build videos and we're going to be starting things off with a dexterity build that utilizes three main play styles. Now I actually use all three of the weapons that you're going to be seeing in this video depending on what I'm fighting and each one of those weapons is going to utilize different talismans and physic mixes and ashes of war so whilst you might decide to use all three like me you might also decide to just focus on one of them. I'll quickly mention the three weapons before we dive into the loadouts for each and the reasons for why we use each of them in what situation. Now ignore my stats and my level that you'll see on the side from time to time but towards the end of the video I'll explain what you want to aim for depending on your character level or chosen playstyle. So first we have dual wield scavengers curved swords. In PvE these are what I would use for nimble or aggressive bosses where I need to be mobile or evasive, very in and out style of combat and also utilizes bleed. The second weapon is a single Nagakiba katana which serves as my general world exploration weapon and dungeon runner and I also use it on slower bosses as this is designed to either do great AoE damage or instantly break stances on large single targets and the last weapon is our cheese weapon the weapon that some people will use to carry them through certain encounters or just a backup weapon if you need to get something dealt with quickly without much concern and that is of course the famous bloodhounds fang now before we jump into the talismans i just want to quickly say that there will be too much information in this video to give a individual guide on where to obtain each item you can easily find that stuff now just by searching for the item you're looking for on either youtube or via the elden ring wikis however there is a very easy way to get any weapon or talisman you're after and that is via trading so if you don't have anyone to trade items to you you're more than welcome to join our discord where our members will be more than happy to help you and a link to that will be provided in the description and pinned comment so starting with the scavengers curved swords you'll see they come with native bleed and we're going to be adding our own ash of wars onto them firstly for the offhand we will be using seppuku which we can apply by two-handing the offhand and then hitting our weapon art that will take a bit of health from us and empower the weapon increasing attack power and bleed application on our main hand this is where we apply that mobility I mentioned earlier in the form of Bloodhound Step which is crazy in both PvE and PvP creating or closing distance as well as general mobility to the point where with a little bit of control over the lock-on system you can actually teleport behind people like an edge lord and just backstab them. For the weapon scaling in our offhand we want to have blood scaling and in our main hand we want to have keen scaling. This is very important because with blood scaling whilst it increases bleed stacking it prevents us from manually buffing our weapon via greases or magic however because seppuku is a weapon art it will work so we scale our main weapon with Keen, which not only gives us an increase to our AR via deck scaling, it will allow us to imbue our main hand with blood grease. For this setup, as it doesn't use weapon skills for damage, it's mostly focused on chain attacks. We're optimizing our damage through talismans that increase attack power through chain attacks, bleed activation, or direct stat increase modifiers. So, Lord of Blood's Exulation, which gives us an attack buff on any form of bleeding, Millicent's Prosthesis boosts dexterity by five points and raises attack power with successive attacks, Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, which grows greatly raises attack power with successive attacks and finally Radagon Sword Seal which greatly raises attributes so plus 5 to Vigor, Endurance, Strength and Dex whilst increasing the damage we take and I'd say this one is the most flexible where if you feel you're taking too much damage and it's not worth the stats and weight capacity increase then you can always swap it out for something more tanky like either the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman that gives a massive buff to your physical negation or you can throw on Great Jar's Arsenal to massively increase equip load and then just stack yourself out with the heaviest armor. For the Physic Mix with these weapons keep in mind we're not really breaking stances or tanking hits it's mostly R1 spam so we can best benefit that with Thorny Cracked Tear which makes consecutive attacks grow stronger and Dexterity Not Crystal Tear which is just a straight boost to our decks. Now of course if you wanted to be more tanky you could just use the Opaline Bubble Tear which gives you that defensive bubble that absorbs a ton of damage along with Crimson Bubble Tear which basically is the second chance miracle from Demon Souls. It will give you a massive heal when you're about to die. Finally, for the playstyle with this weapon set, let's say versus a boss or large enemy, we two hand our offhand, cast Seppuku to buff the offhand, switch back to Jewel Wield, and then use a Blood Grease to imbue our main hand. Then we drink our Physic Mix Flask and engage. We use Bloodhound Step to avoid incoming damage and then just spam R1 chains and then massively multiply our damage from all of the chain attack modifiers we have equipped. And if you want to know why the giant died so fast, I'll show you. It's basically because all of those modifiers we have stacked together are more than doubling our attack power. So if you look here, you can see our base value is 492 on our main hand. And after a few R1 chains on this dragon, it goes all the way up to 1160. And that's within a few seconds. So on a real boss, you'll see far more insane growth and uptime. So for the second weapon, the single Nagakiba, the cons 
concept would work on any two-handed weapon that has native bleed but I'm running the Nagakiba because it's exceptionally long for its weapon type as well as its native bleed and we need to be able to put a custom weapon art and for it to be buffable and custom scaled so the Ash of War we're using for this is Spinning Slash a very understated skill because it's very common and doesn't seem particularly special but when combined with everything we're combining it with it's absolutely devastating mostly in the fact that we can pretty much one-shot most enemy stance meters and open them up for a critical as well as the fact that it has a very wide 360 AoE which is great for multiple enemies outside of boss rooms which is where this weapon sees the most use for me especially in dungeons or caves because bleed isn't the emphasis on this weapon even though it is capable of bleed we're going to want to make it keen scaling to take full advantage of the decks and add as much power to the skill attack as possible so because we're not spamming R1 chains like with the curved swords we're focusing on maximizing skill damage and stance breaking our talismans and physic mix is going to reflect that so we're going to be taking the shard of alexander which greatly boosts the attack power of skills the ritual sword talisman raises attack power when hp is at maximum the dagger talisman which enhances critical hits and finally the radagon sword seal but again if you find yourself taking too much damage just use the dragon crest great shield talisman and the physic mixes for this setup is going to be the stone barb crack tier which makes attacks more likely to break enemy stances so no matter the enemy they're getting knocked down from at most a couple of spinning slashes and a couple of jump attacks the last one is actually entirely flexible with this setup i like using green spill crystal tier because i find myself using a lot more jumping attacks and skill spam with this setup which can really eat into your stamina so this will give you a nice boost to your stamina off from the get-go and you can really open aggressively to force that critical now finally the super cheesy play style this is the weapon i first discovered when trying to beat melenia and ending up just cheesing the crap out of her it's the bloodhounds fang which has native bleed super stagger super damage and one of the strongest weapon arts in the game in bloodhounds finesse which has evasive utility massive burst damage and insane stance break we can't manually scale it so it's naturally going to be a little bit more quality focused than pure decks but we'll get into that later when i talk about the stat distribution but it can be imbued with with Greece however and for this setup it's actually a combination of the previous two so depending on whether you're dual wielding it or two handing it and if you're two handing it you're generally going to be spamming the weapon art so if you're dual wielding it and R1 chaining you're going to copy the curved sword loadout and if you're two handing it with the weapon art you're going to copy the Nagakiba loadout however there is one more play style you can use with this and that is the thick boy poise loadout you play kind of like a strength build but you basically drop everything talisman wise for weight and poise increasing stuff so you can keep on the Radagon Sword Seal because that increases stamina but you also want to throw on the Great Jaws Arsenal and the Ertree's Favor then slam on the heaviest armor you can with the highest poise while staying at medium weight and then also put on the Dragon Crest Great Shield so you can just trade hits with high poise which we can also maximize with a Physic Mix so a Laden Hard tier which increases poise as well as Stone Barb Cracked tier to break stance which is important with a weapon like this which is heavy and does a lot of stance damage to begin with there is a mix for increased equipment weight but you never want to use that because that means you've got a fat roll whenever you don't have your flask active and that's just super annoying to rely on so I recommend this setup strictly poise and heavy playstyle if you wanted to go pure damage I would recommend the other two depending on if you're dual wielding or two handing with the weapon art so now taking a look at the stats as mentioned earlier stat priority is going to depend on several things firstly your level cap are you going up to 150 like this character or are you going to lock at 125 are you going to be pve are you going to be pvp or are you going to be a hybrid and also what weapon are you using so let's start with vigor because this is very important if you are pve you do not need more than 50 vigor 60 which is the main soft cap is overkill for pve content 50 is enough to clear all of new game plus content and trade hits with the toughest bosses certain things like eating a full millennia waterfowl dance is going to destroy you sure but it would if you had 60 vigor so if you're struggling with 50 the issue isn't your vigor it's your ability to avoid damage now if you're pvp focused you absolutely do want to go 60 vigor because everyone you encounter is going to have 60 vigor which means if you're at 50 they're going to have 200 base hp advantage over you so regardless if you're level 125 or you're 150 pve 50 vigor pvp 60 vigor now as we go through the rest i'll be describing based on my level of 150 and you can just scale the stats down for lower levels because the priorities will be exactly the same so 25 mind this is a perfect stopping point because this is enough for you to use any spirit summon in the game as well as offering you a comfortable fp bar outside of being a caster to spam your weapon arts and not have to carry multiple mana pots for endurance again 25 is the initial stopping point for me because 25 is where we have enough weight capacity to dual wield all of the weapons other than 
ultras, wear the armor we want to wear, as well as carry secondary items such as ranged weapons and a parry shield, which we'll get more into later. The only issue is at 25 endurance, we will need to use certain equipment weight boosting talismans to make certain things work. So we'll come back to this, but in most cases, it just means wearing lighter armor. But anyway, the next step is our main stat, which is dex, and this all depends on your choice of weapon. So for me, mostly using the keen scaling weapons, I want to set dex to the main soft cap of 80. However, if you wanted to use the Bloodhound's Fang exclusively, then you'd want to be a little bit more quality focused. So you could maybe go 60 dex and dump the rest into strength. But because we're mostly using keen scaling, we want to stick with 80. Put 18 points into strength, which is the minimum amount needed to wield Bloodhound's Fang in one hand. So you personally might never use that weapon and won't need that amount of strength. But either way, we're dumping everything that's left over back into endurance because now we don't have to waste a talisman slot on equipment weight talismans. I do everything I want to do with this build whilst fully utilizing damage modified talismans as well as having a pretty hefty stamina bar so next let's talk about secondary items you always want to carry with you in your loadout which is another reason why endurance is so necessary any light weapon with bloodhound step for situations where you get caught in environmental hazards that impair your movement you can quick switch to this and glide through it obviously if you're using the curve swords like i am you'll be running that on the main weapon anyway a small and light shield that you can apply the skill carrion retaliation to carrion retaliation is basically a magic parry and whilst there are better magic counter shields in the game this is just a secondary accessory so we need it to be really small and really light carrying retaliation works as a regular parry too which is obviously really useful but when used as a magic parry it gives you a little summon of glintstone shards that actually do a surprising amount of damage and can lead to some pretty funny situations Lastly, you'll want a ranged weapon, ideally a light one that you can just carry in your bag so that you're able to trigger or shut down dungeon traps from a distance, as well as pull aggro or even clear out smaller targets from range. I personally like the pulley crossbow because you can fire it with one hand and it fires multiple bolts at once, but the advantage that bows have is that you can manually aim with them with a crosshair for precision shots on non-targetables such as traps. For spirit summons, in my opinion, there are only really two standout choices in Mimic, which is a direct copy of your character and stats, so if you're using this with some Something like the Bloodhound's Fang, your Mimic is basically capable of soloing some of the hardest bosses in the game. Outside of Mimic though, I think Lutal the Headless is just one of the strongest spirits in terms of holding aggro, staying alive, as well as just putting out a good amount of damage. But if you're looking for something just to compensate and aid your bleed stacks for example, then Black Knife Tish is super cool, just don't expect it to carry you because it's super squishy. And if you leave it alone with the boss, it won't take long to die. And when it comes to armor, it really doesn't matter, it's all about fashion, but if you really want to min-max, then the Okina Mask is the only thing you really need to care about because it adds three dexterity beyond that it's just fashion that said i do like the black knife armor because it sort of acts like a stealth talisman and that it makes your footsteps silent and my fashion is currently the black knife chest piece the iron cusser mask and the fire prelate gauntlets and greaves which i don't know kind of makes it look like some badass futuristic ronin look anyway guys that's the video i'm going to try and pump these builds out as fast as possible before eventually moving on to dedicated pvp builds for now though as mentioned at the start you're welcome to join our discord and find people to trade and co-op with links will be provided to that in the description and pinned comment and if you like this video please hit a thumbs up as that really helps me out and if you're not already subscribed consider doing so for more Elden Ring content coming soon okay guys until next time take care